Welcome to the Lilith's Homestead. This is the Change Your Life in 100 Days Challenge. Day one. I'm excited to start this. We're going to do this for 100 days. So we'll have 100 videos when it's all said and done. So it's going to be fun. I hope you'll join me. I found this on TikTok uh, today, this morning. And we're two, so I'm two days behind right now. <laughs> I started yesterday, July 19th. But that's okay. Today's July 20th. So we can do this. We can do two in one day. It'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, it's exciting. And I wanted to I wanted to start it. So, And I hope you will join me with it. Um, today, well, yesterday, when she started the challenge, it was day one. And day one was to write down 10 goals, short or long term. Whatever goals you have. That's what she wanted you to write down. So, I have mine right here. Okay, so we're going to go over mine. And maybe it'll help you figure out yours or, you know, and leave it in the comments if you want to, what you think yours would be or if you can think of it. It's a little harder than you think to sit there and uh, think of 10 things. Because <laughs> I have stuff I want to do all the time, but it goes... It's an idea, and then it just floats away. <laughs> That's just how Tamara's life is. Okay, so um, so here's my top ten. Number one is to complete this challenge. I do not always complete challenges. I find them, I see them, and I'm like, that is so neat. I want to do that. I want to try this. I want to do this. And... Completed some of them. I won't say I've not ever completed. I've completed some of them, but I it's they're few and far between that I actually complete. But it's okay. The the thoughts there, <laughs> and that what they say. It's the thought that counts. Yeah, I thought about it. <laughs> okay, number two. To wear my contacts less and my glasses more. That one's gonna be a little hard for me. I do like the new glasses I bought. I really do this time. I, I do like them, but I have not worn them yet. And it's been over a month, and I haven't worn them. I love my contacts. They're easy for me. I don't have any trouble with them. So it's gonna, that, one's, that one's going to be challenging for me. So that's why I said to wear them less. Uh, not to stop wearing them. I'm not going to stop wearing them, but wear them less and wear my glasses more. Okay, number three, to follow the cleaning schedule that I have. Now, here's another one that I started years ago as a cleaning schedule. I found it on um, cleanmama.com, and she has a whole routine, a daily routine that you do. I've talked about it on here before, but, and it what it does is, Every day, well, every day you have a few things you have to do. Like make your bed. Let me just get it. Since I'm at home, I'll just get it right quick. It sits on our refrigerator, so I see it every day. And I still don't follow it. Okay. So, the cleaning schedule, the, mom, the clean mama schedule. Daily, you make your bed, wipe countertops, sweep, and take out trash. So, very simple stuff for daily. Then on um, Sunday through Saturday, she has a routine. Now, I changed up what we do to fit our schedule. So, because there's just some things I just cannot get done on the days that she had it. We had too much going on at the time and all that. So, on Sunday, we do sheets. That uh, Monday, you do countertops and mirrors. Tuesday, you dust do a load of laundry, one load, wash and dry, fold and put away. It's a complete laundry, but one load. And Tuesday is when we take out our trash for the week for trash pickup on Wednesday morning. So we, so it's on my Tuesday. Wednesday, we vacuum and you wash a load of towels. Thursday, you, you mop. Friday, you do a load of laundry. Saturday, we clean bathrooms wash another load of towels, and get any laundry 
that needs to be, that didn't get done on Friday if you need to catch up any more laundry. Now, I, I do separate our laundry. So we have lights and darks and then towels. So I do three loads, three separate loads. And then monthly, you change your air, bleh, change your air filter, clean your baseboards, polish your wood furniture, clean your appliances, and clean your blinds. That's monthly. So it's a good little, little routine. I just don't stick to it. I end up doing, uh, we don't make our bed every day. I do wipe down the countertops in the kitchen. I don't do the bathroom every day, but I do the kitchen. Um, I don't sweep every day. And we pretty much take out the trash every day. That's a because we don't we don't use big trash bags. We just use our Walmart bags. So it's just when that gets full, it gets taken out. So it's not not a big deal. So uh, yeah. So maybe I, that's my other one. Is number three is to follow the cleaning schedule. I have it. I just don't follow it. So I'm gonna get do better on that. Uh, number four is to meal prep and eat healthier. I don't do bad now, but I don't do great. Y'all know that. I just, you know, but we could always do better. Okay, number five is no soda drinking and drink more water. Now, y'all know if you've been here for a while, once I found out that I had cervical cancer and I was going to have to have a hysterectomy back in the beginning of the year, I stopped my soda drinking about two weeks before my surgery because I was drinking a soda every day. And I did stop that and started drinking water all day except for a cup of tea, sweet tea, with my dinner. And I did do that, but I did give up the sodas. I've had one soda since I gave it up back in April. And that was the uh, Mountain Dew that y'all saw me with last week. While I was on vacation, I had that Baja Blast Mountain Dew. And by the way, I did not finish that. Ended up pouring that out because uh, it got flat and I just didn't end up drinking all of it. But not even going to do that anymore. So we're going to cut out the sodas completely now. So that one's not going to be too bad because I've already been doing that. Um, number six for me was walking 30 minutes a day. I, and as you know, I started that as part of my recovery from my surgery. That was my goal to get up to 30 minutes in four weeks so that I could go back to work. <laughs> uh, so I've still been doing that. There have been some days that I've taken a rest day. There have been days that I walked for 45 minutes. So but I basically do it 30 minutes a day. Sometimes I go to the gym and I'll walk um, the treadmill. Sometimes I do the elliptical for 30 minutes. And then uh, sometimes I do it here at the house. Either I will walk in the mornings when I get up or like last week I was walking outside because it was so pretty last week. So I was doing it, but I was, I am doing 30 minutes. So that one's, I can do that one pretty good. Number seven is to read more books. I'm not a book reader. I wish I was. I wish I enjoyed it more. I've had moments in time <laughs> that I'll get into reading books and kind of uh, enjoy it there for a little bit. And then next thing you know, I'm done with it. So, uh, number eight is, now this one is our long term. Because I told you mine were basically short term. Number eight is to finish our swimming pool savings. Uh, there again, if you've been here for a while, you know that we are debt free. We followed the Dave Ramsey baby step program and we paid off our house, our mortgage loan, November of 2020. So we're coming up on two years of being mortgage free. So it's pretty, it's a really nice feeling. So if that is something, if you're in debt or, uh, even if you don't have any debt and you just have your mortgage, get it paid off. It, I promise you it's the best thing you can do is get that, get that house paid off. Um, it took us, we started the debt-free journey 2018. Yes, 2018. We didn't have many, many, uh, a lot of debt. We didn't have, because I had already 
had where I had credit card debt before and I had got it all paid off. So we still had credit cards at the time, but we were paying the balance off every month. We weren't, uh, we weren't paying interest on the, the credit cards. Now, if, uh, you know, one reason we do that is because we get our gas for our vehicles at Sheets. Well, Sheets has, if you have their credit card, they have a rewards program that you get uh, 3% or 3 cent off of their Sheets card. If you have their credit card, you get 5 cent more off of with the three. So we get 8 cent off per gallon every time we fill up. So that's why we have a Sheets credit card. Now, what I do with that, we do put our gas on a credit card. And what I do is I we take our receipt and every week I do our bills and savings. And in our savings, there is a sheets line and whatever we spend in gas gets moved over. Just like it was a debit purchase, that's how we do it. That money sits there in savings and waits for the statement balance to come. And once the credit card statement comes, we see the balance, I take the money, it should match, and I take the money over and we'll pay the bill. So we're not paying any interest on it. But it was, I'm not giving that up when I get eight cent off a gallon, you know? So it's it's a little, I know if you listen to Dave Ramsey, he says cut them all up and, you know, which for most people, that's what they have to do. You cannot have a credit card out there if you can't pay the balance every single month because you're you're costing yourself money. And it's a it's a dark hole. And I, I completely agree with that. So uh but anyway, so back to this. So we are now in the process of saving for a pool, a swimming pool. I have wanted one since I was a little girl. I've always loved swimming pools. And I just want one. And so we started, I started the savings in uh well. I was supposed to start it in January, but as you know, January is when I found out that that's when I had to have my biopsy, and I was determined to not start a savings to have to pay, because we didn't know what was going to happen, so I couldn't bring myself to start a savings knowing I was going to have to pay for anything that was coming up, because we did not know at the beginning how bad my, what stage my cancer was. So we didn't know. And I couldn't bring myself to start a savings for something that I had wanted as a little girl to have cancer come and take. You know, it just, I knew I, it was going to devastate me more having to use that money for something that I wanted for something that I shouldn't be having. You know, that, that was my mindset. So I didn't even start it in January. I was supposed to, but I didn't. Well, once we, um... We knew that I, it was, I was basically stage one. You know, it had been called early. We kind of understood that once the surgery was done, there wasn't, I wasn't going to have to have chemo. I wasn't going to have to have all this aftercare. So for uh, medical, medicine, you know, that there had, there has been some aftercare, but not, not to the extent it could have been and what a lot of people have to go through. So then I started the savings. So I am behind in the swimming pool savings. It was supposed to be done by the end of this year, but that didn't happen. And I did have to end up paying for part of my hysterectomy surgery. Insurance didn't cover all of it. So I did have to pay my portion. Well, that's where the money come from was my swimming pool because I did save up. I had been saving up and, and we have an emergency fund because that's what part of the baby steps that's being debt free, you have to have an emergency fund. We had that, but I could not bring myself to use our emergency fund money for that. It just it it just bothered me. So I took it out of the swimming pool money. And since then I have um built it back up some, but it is not where it was going to be at the beginning of the year when the plan was supposed to start. So but that's okay. Hey, I'm cancer-free now. <laughs> I don't have my swimming pool yet, but we're going to get there. Hmm. So that's why that's number eight. But that, like I said, it is, I would like to have it by the end of the year, but I'll get it one day. So it's a long term for right now. Okay, and number nine is 
I'm going to do my best to not stress over the small stuff. One thing during my recovery that I found out when I was sitting here for five weeks was how much stress I was allowing in my body, in my mind and in my body. They, the doctors cannot tell us where my cancer came from. I, I'm not a smoker. I'm not everything that was there. Their, their top five things is how you get cancer, what causes cancer and everything I didn't have. Or I don't do. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I don't, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that they say causes it. And I didn't have any of them. My, uh, one of the top ones for cervical cancer is HPV that, uh, virus, which is that human papillorous virus. How do you say it? Well, at first they were thinking that that's got to be what it is. Well, it turned out that's not what my numbers were. So it's like, okay, you know, so it wasn't that it was, I don't smoke. I don't drink alcohol. I eat fairly well. I mean, you know, there are some foods that they say to stay away from and all that. We don't know. So, <clears throat> and one of the, one of the things on the big list, not your top five, but the real, the big list of when you go on the cancer.org website is stress. And I knew I was under stress um, just with life, life in general. I was, I was stressed out. I, and, but being here for five weeks recovering made me realize how much stress I really was under. Letting it bother me, letting it build up and things like that. So I've done better since I went back to work and, you know, life started moving again i i've i've done better with it i have learned to um to to tell people no i don't i don't i'm not a yes person i'm not a people pleaser as in i have to do you know i'll run myself ragged before i do for me no i i'm not to that level but i did have a hard time saying no at work in life, in general, no. I got no problem saying no. It don't bother me one bit. But in work, I did. And I think it was a thing of, I just, I wanted to do a good job. They pay me to do a job and I want to be, I want to give them 120%. Well, given 120% and keep taking more than what you should was burning me out. And it was stressing me out. I'm a firm believer that is where my cancer come from. It was stress related. I really, I, that, because nothing else makes sense. Nothing else on that list is my lifestyle or that would have caused it. So it just doesn't make sense. So I am a firm believer that that's what, that's where it come from was the stress. And I also think that it was, it was a blessing that it was called early, that I did not have to go through chemo, that they were able to, I was able to have a total hysterectomy and I was able to just heal from the surgery that removed all the cancer. So I, I feel like it was God's blessing that it was caught early. And, and it was, I really think it was one of those times that, you know, I hear a car that God will make you sit still. And if you don't listen, he will make you sit still. And that's what happened to me. So, but I had to quit worrying about everything. You know, the things that I cannot control, I had, I've got to let them go. So, that just sounds like they're at our driveway. Okay, moving on. So, I'm, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to do better with not stressing over the small stuff. Now, there are some things you're going to have to, you're, you're going to have it. Stress is in your life. It's going to happen, you know. But I'm going to do better with not letting the small stuff get me. The stuff that, is, if, you've, if you've seen that quote, it says, if it's not going to matter in five years, don't spend five minutes thinking about it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That little bitty stuff that's just annoying, <laughs> you know, just going to do better. Okay, and my last one, 
this video went longer than I thought, um, is number 10. I want to learn to curl my hair and get it to stay all day. Uh, yeah. My hair doesn't, it, it flips, as you've seen. It wants to flip, but it's not a curl. I want those beach wave curl, you know, and to make it last. I don't, my hair just doesn't want to get, want to last being curly. So, I want to figure out how, a way to do that and get it to stay all day. And then, then that, then I can have curly hair and I can have straight hair. <laughs> so, but yeah. So, that's my day one top 10 goals, short and one long term. So, um, so yeah, leave me in the comments if you're going to try this. And if you want to mention your goals, your top, if you want to mention all 10, that's fine. If you want to mention one of them, hey, it's fine with me. But yeah, tell me what you're going to do for your change your life in 100 days challenge. All right, y'all. I'll see you later for day two. Have a great day. Bye.